Hi guys, I'm Mehmet Saklam. Um, yeah, I'm doing this video about my violent ex-partner, Jake Turner Coombs. He was, he's known for doing Proud Horizon in Luton. Um, I got into a relationship with him in January 2019. He began very, he was very, very violent towards me. He cheated on me and done some disgraceful things to my mother and me and really really hurt me in a bad way where I where I was taking antidepressants. I felt like I wanted to kill myself through all this all this shit that he's put me through. Um basically I was conned out of a lot of money. I was lied, cheated on for no apparent reason other than just made just greed through him. Um he says horrible things about me. Um, he's really, really hurt me. Basically, on certain occasions, he would throw me down the stairs. He would beat me black and blue, draw blood f from my body. Um, he made me feel the worst that I've ever felt about myself. He would constantly call me fat, ugly worthless and the beats just got really out of hand but I never stopped loving him and when I found out that he cheated on me with num numerous of men in toilets on a dating app called Grindr it just destroyed my life and then while I was with him he he's clearly met a new person behind my back I moved down there one day, just one day, decided to walk out of my life, lie, lie to me saying that he was going to a funeral in Ireland for his nan's funeral and basically lied to me and got with this new partner down in Northampton and since then has been saying nasty things over Facebook about me and conning people for charity money uh, you you really have to be careful if Jake Turner Coombs messages you emails you wants to do Luton Pride uh, anything like that, any charities that sort of thing it's not real everything you that you put your money into it's just going in his pocket he doesn't care about your charity he's making mockeries out of views like the way he did with me i got into a relationship i loved him so much i treated him well i brought him into the family my mum loved him as a son and he ended up putting like sky in never paid it i just recently found out that he's moved the Sky package to his new partner slash victim over which I pay for. I pay three months in advance on it through I uh, through what he told me. He made me pay Sky, broadband, that sort of thing. And I believed that it was for us in our home and he ended up changing it, changing the password and basically using it knowing that I pay for it and making a mockery out of me um, I am deeply upset about it all he will sit there and call me all sorts insult me knowing that I loved him I cared for him and none of that's ever good enough he hurt me he hurt me so much in the fact that he got me arrested for no apparent reason. I got cleared of all charges of har allegedly harassing him, which I never did. And he carries on making out that he that I did this and I did that. And I haven't. I got cleared of all charges. He he's made up my life hell. I've just recently found out as well that he's been meeting up people behind my back all the time that we were together in toilets and it just kills me 
that I treated him nothing but with respect. I loved him so much to the point where I gave him everything. He alienated me from my mother. He would tell me what to do. He would tell me what to wear. He, he ended up stealing every bit of item that I've had. But literally, I'll, I'll go into it, how we first met. I did meet him on a dating app, Grinder. Um, he messaged me out the blue. I was shocked. Um, I just recently come to the area. I was homeless for a bit. And I just got put into like a temporary accommodation. And he suddenly peered up. And I felt, okay. Nice guy. And yeah, just started messaging him. He gave me a lot of uh, charm. And I felt for it. And I met him. I got I fell in love with him straight away. And uh, and I think he knew that, and that's how he pl ended up playing me. And yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and then he started wanting money off me, and I gave him it because I I liked him, and I really thought. Yeah, what have I got? What haven't I got to lose? You know? And I told him that on one day that um, I was I was going to be homeless. Uh, the landlord of um, this property that we were in there temporary told us that we couldn't be there anymore. And I was desperate. I told him I'm going to be homeless. Um, I'm scared and he said oh I'll help you if you give me money uh, for some rent and I'll help you get somewhere you can live with me I believed him I gave him the money and he fucked off and took my money and never bothered helping me and I felt heartbroken he ignored me I kept on telling him, me and my mum are homeless, my mum's registered blind and she weren't in good health condition and he knew that and he didn't give a fuck, he just wanted money and um, he didn't stop me, I ended up sleeping on the street that night and then they decided to help me go into like hostels and where I had to travel around to go to each hostel with my mum. We did that for about three months and he, in the whole entire three months, he just ignored me. And I, I, I tried to move on and I tried to and I got a place and I thought I'd tell him out of the blue. I'm back in the area, I've got a place now and that's when he started messaging me and I felt bang, I'm back, I'm back in love with him, I shouldn't have. And I feel stupid now that I let him back in my life knowing that what he did to me was uncalled for. And it kills me to know that he made me homeless by taking my money and not by helping me. Even if he just was honest and said that he couldn't help me, I would have been understanding. But him just taking my money promising me that he would help and he just took my money and left me and lied to me and he should be ashamed of himself for what he did to me and yeah it's not nice to be made a fool out of 
I loved him so, so, so much to the point where I couldn't breathe without him. I loved him and it, I knew deep down he weren't in the same way. I knew that he didn't feel the same way as what I did deep down. But I just kept on blanking the feeling of all that, that I loved him and that I needed him and this goes bloody on and on and I feel horrible, I feel like a shit person that I allowed somebody to come in my life knowing that they weren't good for me and it affected my mental health and it just makes me feel like a natural shit person but yeah I fell back in love with him and I moved him in. I loved him so much. And um, what can I say? Um, the relationship just turned, it, at first it was really, really nice. Like we would get on and he can do enough for me. And then that's when the cheating started happening. Like messages would come on his phone. He would give me his phone, make out it was my mum. And I would see these messages just come up on my phone. Come up on his phone, sorry. And it's like he wanted to deliberately show me these messages and it ended up somebody messaging him saying thank you for the nice time in the toilet and the, the, the man in question said that they met in a toilet and had sex and that I was with him and I'm sitting at home cooking him dinner and believing that he was at work when he lied to me. He was sitting at a public toilet all day having sex with random men while I'm sitting there looking after my mum, trying to keep us all warm, pay the bills, do shopping and cook, and cook him a nice meal and make him feel like a family and he would do that to me and I felt devastated and I cried I stormed up into the, my room he then chased me he said it was a mistake he said he loved me he kissed me and he said he was sorry and he wouldn't do it again I feel stupid for taking it I believe in it I feel stupid but I just felt this has got to be a mistake, like, he wouldn't do that to me, but he did. And I just felt stupid for taking him back, believing all the bullshit. They kept on saying that he never did this. He loved me, why would he do it? And just making me feel bad, making me, making me feel bad for doing it when there is physical evidence of him doing it where there's a man in question that's telling that's sent him a message saying thank you for the nice time in the toilets and then sending him explicit, mess explicit messages with pictures and it just destroyed me just destroyed me knowing that I'm sitting at home faithful to him and I stayed faithful to him ever since and him just making a mockery at me by doing this to me and it just continued with the cheating, the lies, saying that he was bisexual, uh, yeah and then out of the blue he said that he had, that, he, that when he was younger he had got a girl pregnant and he's had a baby, a son and he died in childbirth and it just destroyed me, it just made me feel sorry for him and 
and yeah, I just felt sorry for him and I cried and I said I'm so sorry for judging you and for hurting your feelings and not believing you and all that and he just made me feel bad for everything and I just and I just thing and then it's it sort of like went good from there. Like we got on and I loved him and we would go out. I would pay it for everything. Meals, he wouldn't do anything for me. He wouldn't hold my hand, he wouldn't kiss me. He wouldn't do anything. And and I just felt like a shit person. And later on he said that I'm fat, I'm ugly, he would drum in my head. You're worthless, you're nothing. You're fat, I don't fancy you, I'm only with you. I'm only with you because I feel sorry for you. And he just kept on being really horrible and he put doubts in my head. He would say, oh, your mum, your mum is not blind. You're, you, you, you are better off without her, trying to get me away from my mum. And, yeah, and just really being really horrible. And the insecurities that are coming in, I would lose weight for him. Then he said, oh, why don't you go to the gym with me? Uh, you're fat. And I felt bad for him because at, at first I felt bad for him. I thought, what the fuck? I am fat. I'm ugly. I'm this and I'm that. And I just felt, okay, I believe you. And I let him, I let him control me in that way. And I let him tell me that I was fat and ugly. And I said, how much is the gym? And he was like, 30 quid. So I, he set up the gym. I gave him the money and we started going. Um, yeah. And then before we would go to the gym, he would always smack me, punch me in the head and say, you're a fat cunt, you're nothing, and you deserve to go to the gym because you're fat, I want you skinny, um, telling me to drink protein stuff, making me buy the powders, and making me, making me feel like I was nothing. And it jumps in my head and I'll do absolutely anything to change myself, so yeah, and he just kept on digging and digging and digging at me, and then with that, he the beats were getting out of hand, the punches, the the hits, the blood that would come out from me, and. And all the times that I just wanted to cry. And, and I just feel like fucking shit. And I just fucking feel like shit. And I tried to stay strong. I just wanted it to work. I don't want to, I felt like I just didn't want to be lonely. I'll take it all, I'll take it all. I take the beats, I take everything, I just don't want to be lonely anymore, you know, I just don't want to be lonely, and I was fed up with being lonely, so I believed him, every single word that he ever said, you're fat, you're worthless, you're nothing, and now on certain occasions, he would like, tie me up with a belt, and just fucking punch, 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 I couldn't cope. And like, he would tell me that he was cheating on me. And we, uh, uh, and he doesn't see me in a sexual way. He doesn't see me in any kind of way. And he just kept on saying, 
you worthless, you're nothing, and you're fucking ugly, and nobody will fucking want you. But he, he just kept on making me have insecurity. I wouldn't believe anybody, I wouldn't talk to anybody, I wouldn't trust anybody. And I just couldn't cope anymore. And all I wanted was kisses and cuddles and he would just push me away. And if I kissed him he would punch the shit out of me. If I holded his hand he would punch me and go mad. He would go mad at me. Nothing was ever good enough for him. Nothing was ever, ever, ever good enough. As so much as I tried to love him, support him, everything. He just kept on putting me down and down and down. And I couldn't cope. You know, I just couldn't cope any longer. And he beat me so badly. I ended up wearing jumpers to cover it all. And, it, and I just didn't feel like me, you know, I just didn't have no confidence. And my mum saw the change in me. And I, I, I would just ignore her. And then he would get really, really distant from me. And he started cheating. And he... He then, like, I had a row with him. We were rowing because I had enough with him cheating. I just couldn't cope with it and, like, not wanting to kiss me. I felt lonely and I kept on saying to him, I, I want you to cuddle me, I want you to, to be with me, baby. And he, at the time, we were, I was coming downstairs and he pushed me right downstairs. And then he punched the shit out of me. And my mum, my mum found me when he, he, he eventually left after punching me. My mum had to bathe me in the bath. Because of the beats was so much. He drew so much blood out of me. And she was like, go to the police and I said I can't I love him I don't want to go to the police I need him I don't want him gone 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 oh god and I just wanted him to forget about it and then he followed us to the cafe, to a cafe where my mum took me to just clip my head and and everything and we got, we sorted everything out that I believed and like he just put that to my head and made me feel like I weren't worthless, that I was worthless all the time and like, I just couldn't cope. And then on June the 5th of 2019, he said that he was going to his nan's funeral in Ireland. And I, was, I said, I'm so sorry for your loss. And he left. He lied to me. It wasn't true. Um, he stayed somewhere local and lied to me, borrowed money off me to take him to Ireland, borrowed money off my mum to take me to Ireland and lied to us and made a mockery out of us and stayed away from and ignored me for three weeks. And eventually I found out that he was cheating with numerous of men from the area and 
just the worst feeling you can ever, ever have. That somebody would just sit there and cheat on you and you don't know about it. Like you got to wait like a year later before you find out, sort of like a thing. That's what he's done. And like he he made a fool out of me, and it was like when I when I told him that I was gonna go to college and study to be uh, try and be a nurse, he was like, "Oh, you never make it. You never make it. You shit." And currently, I'm like trying trying my best but because of like all this that's happening the corona it's like I can't go back to the college to, to study and get my grades sort of thing whereas to go to university to do to do nursing and he just kept on putting me down you never make it and yeah He's, he kept on being very distant and I just knew deep down that he's cheating or or something weird and he just kept on lying to me and arranging meets with me and never turn up. I would uh, go to these places that he says, I'll wait here, meet me here, I'll turn up and he'll never come. I'd wait for hours upon end for him and he weren't coming and it just made me really really upset that I was making an effort and for what? and for what? nothing now I know it was for nothing he didn't love me he clearly has no respect for me doesn't want to acknowledge and say sorry or anything, just wants to shift everything on me and blame me for everything, knowing that he knows full well what he's done to me and knowing that I would have been happy if we spoke and we would talk and have communication, go therapy, that sort of thing. I would have loved to have done that, went to therapy with him, try and help him out with his anger issues, problems in his past, everything I would have loved to of. I would have loved to of, and I still probably would. Deep down, I'll hopefully he gets the help that he needs. But while that was happening, I would get like letters and debt collectors coming in and like emails that would flood to me, telling me that um, people want their money back. He's used my email address to con people, allegedly. He does like raffle tickets and they would put loads of money in and he would cut ties with them. Basically, you're putting money in and he was taking it and you ain't gonna get no prize, you ain't gonna get no gift vouchers or anything like you promised or this lucky draw, that sort of thing. He was taking all the money and promising you that you that everyone's a winner and all this and it's going to a good cause it's, and all that. People investing money, putting money to him and he's, he's just, Taking your money and giving you a wild ride. And like, I deeply apologise to these people and said, I'm not who you, I'm not Jake. And I really don't know what the hell was going on. So I put it up to him and he just said, Oh, ignore it. I'll sort it out. So I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think nothing of it until like these people were sending me links to 
Luton, Proud Horizon, and it's out there that he's done this before to people. People want their money back. He's setting up charities and setting up fake events. People invest in their money and he's taking it and there's no events, there's no prizes, there's no nothing. And he's just conning news. And I just couldn't believe it. Like there's articles. He was on Judge Rinza, like he was on a 90V show in the UK called Judge Rinza and he's on there and two people are taking him to court, they won and he's sitting there saying that he hasn't done this and like he told me that the people that he was, that that's involved as well, I don't, I don't know it any of the any of the people or what happened but the people that are allegedly in the company or with Proud Horizon he told me that the girl that was in the there's a picture online if you type in on Google Jake Turner Luton um there's a girl pictured with him he told me that she set it all up and she did all the damage and when it comes to all this uh, she got put in prison for two years I don't know if that's a fact I don't know but that's what he told me and he got cleared of all charges and this judge Rinder thing was a mistake they've apologised to him they've removed it and all that which they haven't they haven't removed it it's all on Google. It's still on ITV. Um, I don't know if it's had a rerun since or anything, but it's still up there. He's a liar. He's now res residing in Northampton with his partner slash victim. Um, doing the same thing. He's now put on like a post on cancer research saying that he's uh, uh, like like a crowdfunding sort of like thing where people put money in for a Northampton special needs school it's bullshit anybody that's going to put that money in he's going to put it, take it and that school ain't going to get nothing he's just doing it because he's, I don't know he needs help and I hopefully he gets that but what he's doing to all these people is just sick and wrong. It's wrong. And I hopefully he understands what he's done is wrong. And sorry, don't cut it. Sorry, doesn't cut it what he's done. It hurts people. It's destroying lives. It really has. It's affected people in a big way. And to me, making people fall in love with you i.e. me, and then breaking my heart, leaving me, going to somebody else and getting into a new relationship, rubbing it in my face, knowing that I'm seeing it at home, loving you. For what? I'm heartbroken. I'm sitting here physically heartbroken, wanting you home. Wanting to be with you, wanting to give us a go. You never ended the relationship, you never ever did. You just walked off, left me, didn't tell me where you were going. You told me that you were going to a friend. And then next week I'm finding out that you're with somebody else. You're sitting on your Facebook page saying you're engaged. And that you're getting married and you're being horrible towards me. You're saying to people that I'm a mad ex and I'm doing this and I'm doing that to you and I'm not. I have not done nothing wrong other than just ask him, where's my money? Can I have some of my money back? Like, he took, he borrowed money and he hasn't paid me back. And like, this way, like 10 pound, five pound, 20 pound, it's a lot of money. 
I loved you so much to a point that I would do absolutely anything for you. And you make a mockery out of me. And then I'm getting these people emailing me, wanting, wanting money back, wanting you to answer them, and you're just sitting there ignoring them. And they're, they're saying that they're going to the police, they're reporting you. They were upset that you took in their money in good faith. They thought you were doing a charity that was supposed to be a good cause. And you're not. You're just pocketing it. And then you're ignoring these people that have invested time, effort, trying to help you, support you. And you're sitting there taking their money and not doing anything, not delivering anything. And just ignoring them. That is so horrible. And like, I just couldn't believe it when I read some of the articles. It was shocking. And then when I told him, he was like, you're mental. Don't read everything, don't read everything that you see. It's not true. These people are making it up. And I'm thinking, there's like four different articles, maybe more. I don't know. And they're all sort of like saying the same thing, that you ignored them, you won't respond to them. And you're on a public show that 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 took you to court. And they won. And I just find it horrible that you've done this to people and I feel so bad. And part of me feels like I'm the one to blame. I feel so sorry for every single one that's had to deal with him. I really do. I feel so sorry that you've had to have a dealing with him or even speak to him about all this. It's just wrong what he's done. And it's horrible. To a point where we're all good people and we've, we've believed his bullshit and he's done this to us. But this time, I fell in love with him. And I ended up paying the ultimate price of being having heartache and being, being made a mockery out of having to see somebody else with my partner sitting there rubbing it in my face with their new relationship, attacking me every five seconds, saying that I'm mental, I'm harassing them both. And he's he contacted the police. They have to do their investigation, don't get me wrong. And they arrested me. And I was upset and mortified about the claims that he said. He told them that I've been harassing him for months, I'm mental, and just saying really obscene things. And like, I understand, like the officer said, I have to do my investigations, that's fine, I understand. But first things first, I am not harassing him. I'm in a relation, I, I, I believe that I was in a relationship with him. And he's sitting there, one minute he's messaging me, telling me that he loves me. One minute he wants to be with me and all that. And next minute he's saying different things to people. And he's sitting there to telling police what they want to hear so they can make a big thing out of nothing. Because that's another thing that he does. That's what another thing that Jake does. He sits there and tells a load of bull crap that... that that police want to hear, they want to hear harassment, they want to hear all the bad things, so then they can build a picture and then be like, oh, we'll get the innocent, the innocent, the person that hasn't done anything, and go for him. And that's what he, he did. And then because of this harassment, he said that I was bombarding him with messages, everything, they confiscated my phone for investigation which took about four months and eventually in four months 
they gave me back my phone and no charge. And I got an apology from the officer. And I said, I haven't thingy. I haven't harassed him. And I said, what about the things that you, that you said, that you found on my phone with voicemails, everything else? And they found them and they said, why don't you report it? And I said, well, you're the officer that's in this case. You know, you know what's happening. You've seen these voicemails. You've seen these text messages he sends me. He threatened to kill me if I didn't pay him money or if I didn't meet him or if I was just busy with my mum, he would bombard me with threats. You know, and I would all test text him a bit later on in the day. I'm a bit busy or I just don't feel well. And he just was so horrible towards me. He bombarded me with messages previous. But, I, uh, you know, but sitting there saying horrible things about me to an officer is just horrible and horrific. I did nothing wrong and it got proven that I did nothing wrong and that still weren't good enough for him. It still weren't good enough. He applied, he, 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 he's, he's got an order over nothing. Because I didn't turn up, they, of course, went through with the order that he that he paid for or whatever I don't know how how he got this order but based on no truth whatsoever but he applied for it in January this year knowing that I didn't get my phone back till like March and the decision wasn't made till March that I was that I didn't do it and no truth whatsoever and he sits there and tells a court that I've done this and I've done that, knowing that the police have done the investigations and the court don't seem to give a shit. Because I didn't turn up, they gave an order based on whatever he told, which is lies. I never alienated him from his family. I never harassed him. I never beat him up or hit him. He did them things to me and made me feel like I was a worthless human being. And... It just kills me inside that he sits there and says that he's the victim. I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. I don't deserve that shit and nobody else does. All I'm saying is I have done nothing wrong. I'm wanting to clear my name and prove to everyone that I did not harass him. I did not do anything to him. My crime was loving him and... That's all it was. He hurt me in such a big way. He made a mockery out of me. He he beat me up. He made me feel worthless. And the cheating and the lying and everything. And what he's done with his part, new partner towards me is uncalled for. By making lies up about me. And just sitting there claiming victim all the time. I've done nothing wrong. I loved you so much. You knew that and you played with my heart. You played with my feelings. And you treated me like I was a piece of shit. You, you've never dumped me. You've never told me that it was over. And you still haven't. And I'm happy in my heart to say that we will never ever get back together. I don't know if you ever reach out to me. I don't know. Maybe you will probably threaten me again. But like I say, I hopefully, Jake, you get the help that you need. Because you really, really do need the help that you need. You really do. And I hopefully, in time, you apologise to every single one of these people that you've hurt, conned, and got into a relationship with. And only ended up with them being heartbroken like me. I'm a good person, I treated you well. I never alienated you from your family. I never told you what to do. I never, ever, ever wanted this to happen. 
you decide to sit there and make up lies about me, that's fine. And if anybody wants to believe him, that's fine. That is fine. You're, you're okay to believe whatever you want in your heart to heart. I'm a very, very nice person to get to know. I'm a loving, caring person. I've suffered with mental health problems over because of this. I couldn't cope. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't do anything, I couldn't function for a very, very long time. And now I'm at a, you know, I'm now at a good place in my heart. I'm now happy. I'm now feeling amazing in myself now. And if you've had dealings with him and he's continuing doing this, report him to the police. That's the advice that I would give you. Report him to the police and hopefully he gets arrested or spoken to with an officer I, I don't bombard me with your messages saying that he's done this with me and all this I can't cope with that it's like I couldn't cope I understand he's done some despicable things if he's done it recently to you report him to the police he lives in Northampton that's all I can say. And like I say to him, I wish him nothing but the best. But you really, really need to get help. And stop doing this. Go be happy with your life. I am at my at the point of my life that I'm happy. And I hopefully everybody stays safe with what's going on in this world. You know, everybody deserves love. Every no hate. No homophobic abuse, no racism, everybody's lives matter. Just let's just all be happy, love and support each other. And if you don't like anybody, that's fine. Keep it to yourself. There's no time for hate anymore. There is really no time for hate. Thank you so much. And hopefully, in time, everything heals, you know? I really, really hope Jake Turner Coombs gets the help that he needs for what he's done. I really, really do. And like I say to everybody, stay safe, be happy, stay positive, and I love you. Thank you. Bye.